With every new iteration of SUV comes an ever-dwindling sales figure for its equivalent estate car. For example, I see far more Mercedes GLEs than this Mercedes E-Class in front of me on the road. In fact, I see more E63S estates than I do regular E220 diesels. Although that could be because I live in the London tax bracket. Anyway, let's see if this all-wheel drive diesel is the car you should be buying when you're thinking of a family car. My name's Tom, and you're watching Paragon Cars. Let's go. Now engine-wise, we're already off to a more efficient start. You see, most SUVs have to carry a lot of heft with them and therefore need more power and more displacement, 3 litres to be exact, to lug themselves down the road with. Whereas this E-Class can make do with just a 2 litre diesel with 194 horsepower and 400 newton metres of torque. Is that enough though? Let's see on the 30 to 70 Sprint. Well, it's not a rocket ship, but it wasn't far off some much more powerful diesels like the Range Rover Sport. We managed a time of 7.66 seconds, which is plenty quick enough for daily use. Without the 4MATIC system though, it would be quite a bit quicker I reckon. The interior of this premium plus trimmed E-Class is a fanciful affair. With dual 12.3 inch displays and fine grain wood throughout, you can't really fault it. Everything is actually where you expect it to be. And although there's two large screens, you're still able to control them and your climate control with physical buttons, which is very nice. The rear is properly spacious, even for people over six feet. Plenty of room for legs and heads, but also drinks. The only letdown back here is the lack of USB ports, but you still have a 12 volt socket, so you'll be fine with an adapter. The boot in most estates is where it's at though. You've got an absolutely cavernous amount of room, even with the seats up. But of course, if you do need to put longer items in, you can easily fold the seats down with just the touch of a button. Right then, time for some driving, I think. Right, Mercedes E-Class Estate. Um, interested to do this review because I haven't actually seen many of these on the road. In fact, I see more E63S Estates than just regular E220 diesels. This one's quite interesting though because it is a 4MATIC, so it should give me that kind of reassuring family car vibe whilst also being very efficient. So what's it like around town? Well going over speed bumps you've got nice soft comfy suspension even though this is an AMG line car it's still very much comfort orientated. I'd say something like a BMW 5 series estate is slightly more sporty especially the M Sport model. Even the Audi A6 is slightly harder on the suspension side of things. Steering is nice and light, but it's got a slightly positive turn in, which is nice. Brake pedal and throttle pedal are very easy to judge. Mercedes do brakes really well, actually. They have a really nice initial bite point, and they just give you a lot of confidence that when you're going quicker and you do need to slam on the brakes, you just know it's going to stop the car, which is nice. Now then, in terms of parking, this is a fairly large car, so you're going to want to have some assistance systems to help you out. Thankfully, this is a really highly spec car, so we've got a 360 camera, which gives you reverse camera, side view cameras. I mean, it gives you everything, like I can show you here. It even shows you if you're near a curb, you've got a wide angle reverse camera, just everything, basically. And the good thing is, it's really high resolution as well. So you're not sort of second guessing where you are. Plus the refresh rate is really good, so you don't end up closer to things than you thought you were. Parking sensors are nice and accurate, and we do have all round parking sensors as well. So when you're near a curb, it'll tell you how close you are, which is pretty nice. As you can see, it's doing it there. You can see in between the lines, and then you've got a red line telling you where you're basically as close as you need to be. So for driving around town, as long as you've got a pretty well optioned car, it's fairly easy really. At minimum, I'd say you need a reverse camera because you know, it's Audi A6, BMW 5 Series kind of size, so it does need it at the end of the day. 
then coming out of junctions. I do have start stop turned on, but for some reason Mercedes never seems to turn the engine off. <laughs> I've noticed this in all their cars, even with the system on, it never seems to turn the engine off even when it's warm. And you know, it may it might turn it off, you know, one or two times during a long journey. But um, yeah, it's quite interesting that because Audis turn the engine off at every single opportunity they get, whereas Mercedes don't do that. Quite interesting. Right, let's reset our trip computer to see what kind of MPG we can get on the motorway. Oh, and by the way, coming out of junctions back there, it was actually really smooth. The 4MATIC system combined with that torquey diesel engine is actually really nice. Gearbox is also fairly smooth, which is always a plus. Of course, before we get on the motorway, we've got to have a little taste of the handling. Right, let's get ourselves into Sports Plus. There we go. This will sharpen up the steering, the throttle response, gearbox will shift down a couple of gears, and it just makes the whole car a little bit sharper. It's going to be interesting to see what this formatic system is like. Right, foot down. Yeah, you notice there's a lot more grip, but it's still rear drive bias, which is nice. And for a 2 litre diesel, it's a fairly pokey engine, this. You're not wanting for any more power, which is always a bonus. Now look at this, 50 miles an hour here, put my foot down, downshift straight away, 60, 65, and basically 70. It's a, it's a fairly quick car, you know. Anyway, let's now go into Eco and see what kind of MPG we can get out of this thing. Right then, on the motorway, and this is where this Mercedes is really at home. You can tell this thing is just designed to munch miles with high-speed cruising. Oh look, we're sitting at 60 miles an hour now, and we're only in 7th gear out of 9 gears. Now 8th gear. And you have to be going above 70 miles an hour to even get into 9th gear. So this is definitely designed for the German Autobahn. And in terms of comfort, the suspension really settles down. It gets rid of the smaller imperfections really well. The only thing you notice is it is a little bit floaty, but that's not so bad. And the seats, or oh, the seats, I have to say, they're up there with some of the best I've sat in. There's plenty of adjustability. You can adjust the pitch of the base. Of course, the backrest as well. You've got lumbar support. And it just makes doing longer journeys really, really pleasant. But the key thing for me is you can actually get low enough that your elbows sit on the armrests. A lot of cars, especially like the Audi A6, I find you can't get quite low enough to feel like you're sitting in the car rather than on it. They have gotten better in recent years with their latter designs, but there's still improvement to be had. BMW is still king though in the seating department. I find their 5 Series is absolutely sublime to sit in. You just feel like you're sitting really nice and low and you're in control of the car. And in terms of visibility, to be honest, it could be better. You've got a pretty thick A pillar and B pillar. The A pillar means it's pretty hard to see when you're coming out of junctions. And having a thick B pillar means it's pretty difficult to check your blind spot. The only good thing about the visibility in this car is that you've got big windows and the wing mirrors are fairly large, which does make it a little bit easier. The Audi A6 is definitely easier to see out of though. In terms of road noise and wind noise, this is where the E-Class is really good. I do really think you have to go above an A-Class and at least get a C-Class to get a proper Mercedes where you get proper sound deadening. Build quality is definitely better than the A-Class in this car. It's like they just take a bit more care when they're putting this thing together. And it does make a huge difference. There's no rattles. No interior noise, it's nice and quiet. Everything just feels very calm, very subdued, and very easy to get on with. Is it as good as the Audi A6 or BMW though? Do you know what? I'd say this E-Class is on par with the A6 on the motorway. It's definitely better than the BMW. The BMW is a little bit sportier, so it doesn't quite relax as much on the motorway. And the Audi, it kind of does it a little bit differently. It's less positive steering, more I want to go in a straight line and go really fast. <laughs> then in terms of interior quality, as I said, it's a big step up over the lower classes of cars. 
I'd say this is closer to a C-Class than an S-Class though. The S-Class, you can definitely tell that there's a lot of engineering, even over-engineering, going into that thing. But the C-Class is good enough, feels very solid. This is kind of a bigger version with a bit more room and a little bit more technology. Having these big dual 12.3 inch displays really helps. You've got a lot of customization with them and they just give you all the information that you need. My favourite view is actually the progressive view and the reason for that, I think it kind of suits this particular car really well. It's just calming and it gives you a sentimental rev dial with your speed. Unfortunately I can't use that because I need to actually see what my speed is. Then you've got classic which is the one I was just using which is also fairly nice. Um, kind of mundane though, I find they can jazz it up a bit which you know would give it a bit more bling but not too much. Sport is probably my second favourite view. Um, first favourite in something like an E63S because that's kind of what that car's designed for. But for now we're just going to stay in classic. You've then got your kind of content that you want on the right so you can have your revs, your navigation, your eco display which is basically a display that tells you off if you put your foot down too much and then your consumption which we're currently setting at 40 miles per gallon which is lower than I thought it would be. Hopefully it can go a little bit higher. I want to at least see 50 out of this car, otherwise it's not super worth it for this engine. Then wear and tear, it's actually pretty good, you know. You've got a little bit of shine on the steering wheel, but that's the same with every car. At least the finish hasn't come off. And to be honest, you could easily clean this. Uh, it wouldn't take too long, you could use a magic sponge or some leather cleaner. The only thing I notice is a little bit of wear on the bolster of the seat, but again, same thing with every car. Every car is going to have that, it just depends on who's using it. And then finally, it's that piano black plastic. That's the only thing I think you should just get rid of. It just wears nastily, it gets scratched so easily. Even when you clean it with a microfiber cloth, it gets scratched. It's just kind of a bad choice in terms of trim. Now then, in terms of spec, if I were to buy this car and I only had three choices, what are the three things that I would want? Well firstly, being an estate car is going to be a panoramic roof, mainly because you get an absolutely huge bit of glass on the roof of this. It opens, it tilts, does everything you need, has a blind as well, and it's separated by a beam in the middle, and you get those nice roller blinds that come across each which way, and it just looks really premium, it's definitely worth the money. Secondly, it's got to be that Burmester sound system. To be honest, it's not the best sound system out there. It's as clear as the Bang & Olufsen sound system, but it doesn't get quite as loud. Which is a shame. <laughs> Christ. That's why you don't follow lorries like that. Anyway, back to spec. As I said, the Burmester sound system is on par with the B&O system in terms of clarity, but it just doesn't get quite as loud, which is a shame. Then finally, it's got to be these dual screens. They're a party piece, they're useful, they're easy to navigate once you get used to the touch sensitive controls on the steering wheel, and they're just generally worth having. The thing is, you can get all three of these options by just getting the Premium Plus package. That also includes your heated electric memory seats as well, and plenty of other stuff, which is definitely worth the money. So if you can, just go for a premium plus car. Right, a couple more miles on the motorway, currently sitting at 48.7 mpg, which is not bad really. I do want to see over 50 though, let's see if we can get to that. Right, motorway journey over, we are currently sitting at 51.3 miles per gallon, which is not bad. I do think it should do a little bit better than that though. I'd like to see like 55 mpg, and I think if you drove efficiently you would just about get to that. Anyway, let's get on a B road and see how this thing handles. See if it's any different to a rear wheel drive version. Right, in Sports Plus, traction is in dynamic. Let's see what this thing's like. Not a lot of drama so far. Quite a lot of traffic today as well, so I can't really go too fast. Front holds on well though. Again, steering is nice and positive. And 
the chassis has a really nice balance to it actually. Doesn't want to understeer, doesn't want to oversteer too much. Just feels neutral but rear bias. Most importantly, you can feel what the front end is doing. Right, let's go around once more. Get my foot down here. Wow, there's a lot of grip. Still doesn't really want to go sideways though. But it's not inert, it's actually fairly good fun, you know. It involves you, which is nice. Let me show you what the brakes are like. Just very confidence inspiring. That was only like a quarter of the way through the pedal as well. Now, do you know what? The cornering speeds you can get out of this, uh, similar to a hot hatch really, you can feel that there's an essence of E63 about this chassis. onto the road. You can hear the tyres squealing a bit, but it seems to be all four doing it at the same time. It's one of those cars that won't surprise you, but it'll also get you out of trouble really well and be sort of fun in the meantime. The rear wheel drive version is definitely a bit more involving, but I have to say this formatic system is great. What's it like down a Titerby road though? Well, it is a big car, so it could be pretty difficult to manage. But thankfully, because it's got sharp steering and a fairly agile chassis, it kind of shrinks around you a bit, which is nice. And again, torquey diesel engine gets you up to speed nice and fast. <laughs> Going over bumps, it sorts itself out nicely. I mean, it's Audi A6 with a little bit more involvement. And I have to say, this engine is great. It feels a lot faster than it is. A little bit of acceleration. See, one gear gets you up to speed nicely. And the suspension is surprisingly good, I have to say. Like going over bigger bumps like that does a great job. Reminds me a lot of that E63 S. Feeling of that chassis having that sort of rear drive bias. Yeah, it's very similar. Even though it's got a smaller engine, it's nice to drive. Reviewing this car has left me feeling fairly perplexed, as well, it does everything that people with an SUV need, but cheaper. Oh, and it handles better. I mean, yeah, it can't go up a 45 degree incline, but when do you ever see Carol do that in a Mercedes GLE? So I guess for people out there that want a car that serves them and their needs perfectly, don't buy the next behemoth, buy one of these. Save money and have a little more fun along the way. As always, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, give it a like and why not subscribe? As not only can you see more content like this, you can see everything we have for sale which of course includes this rather lovely Mercedes, which could be yours for just £399 a month with £3,000 down, which is actually fairly decent, especially in today's market. Anyway, my name's Tom, and you've been watching Paragon Cars. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.